Hi there, and welcome back to this video series on how to create a first-person game setup in UE5, or Unreal 5. Previous videos, we set up uh, movement, camera, jump, and crouch. In this video, we're going to set up how to create a sprint function or interaction. So back up in our inputs, we're going to right-click and choose input, input action, and we're going to tie this one to IA sprint. You can look at the previous videos of the setup for the input mapping context and the input actions. So we need an input action. We're going to leave the value type as digital bool. And then I'm going to open up my in, uh, input mapping context. And there's the crouch we previously added. We're going to add a new mapping. We're going to, from the drop down, find our I, IA sprint. And then we're going to add our left shift to the keyboard command. So if I click the keyboard icon and tap tap the left shift, our left shift keyboard is assigned to the IA Sprint event uh, action. So we save this. And the rest of our stuff is going to be in our character blueprint. So we're going to go back to our character folder, open up our BP player. There's our previous crouch. And beside that we're going to add, right click and add IA Sprint. Look at the action event. We're going to open this up because we're going to be using uh, started and completed. So all of the character movement stuff is underneath the character movement component in the components list. And over here in the details panel, we're going to be editing the max walk speed. So default, that's 600 centimeters per second or 6 meters per second. So we need to know that. To access this, we're going to drag our character movement component into the graph. So just click and drag. And then from the character movement, node we're gonna find set max walk speed so the set max walk speed is changing that value for max walk speed so from started we're gonna drag to that first set max walk speed if you remember 600 is our default so let's double that to make sure we can see that the character is sprinting faster so 1200 for our max walk speed and then we're going to duplicate this control C control V because we need to revert back to our main walking speed when we finish our sprint. If I hold down shift, I'm sprinting at 1200 centimeters per second. And then when I let go of shift, I want to go back to 600 centimeters per second. So the second one, I'm going to change back to 600. And I need to connect the character movement to the target of my second set walk speed. And then completed, I'm going to drag that to the second set max walk speed. All right, so that's it. So we can compile and save and go test this out. So if hit play, look at the mountains and then the ground space. If I'm walking regularly with WASD, um, I'm moving at 600 centimeters per second. If I hold down the shift key, you can see that I'm moving much faster and I'm continuing to sprint at 1200 centimeters per second until I let go of shift and I'm going back to 600 centimeters per second. So that's like a toggle on and off, but I'm holding down shift. So that's why I'm using started and completed. If I get out of play mode, I'm going to show you one variation for this and that's what, that's if we need to make adjustments to the sprint or walk speed um, in other interactions or if we need to display that sprint or walk speed, how fast the player is moving or that adjustment uh, in a UI element back to the player. I've previously created um, two variables. I'm just going to delete those out and I'm going to show you how to recreate them again. So if I just delete those out these are under variables here, and if I click the plus symbol, I can title this one Sprint Speed. And as default, it's a Boolean. We want it to be a float green uh, variable. So if I change that Boolean type to float, and I'm going to create another one, and I'll call this one Walk Speed. And that's going to be a float as well. I'm going to click the compile. Okay. And then under Sprint Speed, if this is set to zero as default, um, I'm going to change that to whatever my top set max walk speed was that I chose. So 1200. And then walk speed, if this is default to zero, I'm going to change that to 600. So that will mimic what my main walk speed is and when I let go of shift out of sprinting to go back to. So let's compile. And we're going to drag that sprint speed variable into the max walk speed set value. Okay, I'm just going to move them so we don't have to see them overlapping. Maybe we'll move our character movement down some. 
And then my walk speed, I'm going to add that to my max walk speed set that was 600, the let go of shift sprint, which is what my default walk speed is for my character. So this is just a subset, another way we can create custom variables to be able to drive uh, the change in an interaction. One last thing is we can have this eye icon, and if the eye icon is closed like this, that means this variable is private. Only this blueprint can access this variable. If I want to make this variable so that it can be accessed outside of this blueprint, I need to make it public or change the instance editable type. So with sprint speed selected, I can click on that eye icon that makes it public. It also is called instance editable. So not that we need to do this for this occasion, but that makes variable so that anything outside of this specific blueprint can access this variable if we need to. So we're going to compile. We're going to drag select our components and hit C for comment. And we're going to call this one sprint. And we'll change our color to maybe a nice purple. And then we can move this in place and compile and save one more time. The custom variables like this do not change how the interaction works. It just changes uh, the ability to edit and update this variable easier in the future. So I'll wrap up this video on how to create a sprint interaction in UEE5.